This is Twit. The Proton release candidate, and we sort of knew this was coming, but Jeff, give us the uh, give us the lowdown. Well, it, it could be a little surprising, surprising how well games work on Linux, but uh, getting into that, Proton 9.0 release candidate 2 is released. And, you know, I think I'm known on the show as the gaming person, and it, you know, seems fitting that I cover Proton release, release candidate 2. And, you know, we're, let me uh, step back slightly and say, for those that don't know, Proton is the program that lets Steam users play Windows games on Linux. It's built on Wine, and then Steam adds some patches on top, which are not official Wine release, either because they're too new, maybe they don't meet some standard for Wine, or just haven't trickled into the main repository yet. Proton can move faster, so they can try new things before the official repository does. It's also game-focused, so while there's, you know, some pretty alpha versions of Wine with the new stuff added, they, they focus on other things as well, where Proton is strictly strictly games. Because uh, Val Valve is who does that, and they only do games because Valve is the parent company behind Steam. So Proton 9 is based off of Wine 9, which Code Weavers has also been helping with this project, the Proton project, is in addition to Wine. And Code Weavers does a lot of work with helping Wine improve as well. They're kind of the base company behind, behind Wine. Uh, Proton 9 itself comes with new versions of VK D3D Proton, VXVK, and DXVK NAPI, NVAPI. So basically those are graphics translations engines for uh, Windows games. So converting like, for example, DirectX into uh, Vulkan uh, commands. Uh, most of the fixes, if you look through, have are to do with specific games, but there's some audio improvements in general, you know, making sounds work better in several games and fixing audio controls and spatialization in VR chat in with AV Pro. They've also added handling for more than eight axis input devices. And a lot of the rest of the things are fishing, fixing crashes in games. Uh, some games had memory leaks, which were fixed uh, you know for example when real-time weather was turned on in micro Microsoft flight emulator it caused a lot of issues so now you should be able to turn on real-time weather and things will go a lot better they've also limited the CPU cores seen by some games which would crash because it saw too many cores so <laughs> you know too yes, much that of a was good <laughs> that was quite the interesting problem. Very yeah, specific too. problem, too. I, I remember a friend of mine had it ran into that, and uh, it's like, this has got to be the most specific bug ever. And so it's like, if you have one of AMD's big, you know, 128 core processors, I think is what it had to be. It's like, it would crash these games. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, you know, totally, totally couldn't play them. And, you know, this was games like Far Cry 2, Far Cry, mm -hmm. Cry 4, Witcher 2, Assass Assassins of Kings, uh, Enhanced Edition, and Laura Croft and the Guardian of Light, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. Many others, but we're not going to go into all of them. There's also regressions fixed in such games as Overwatch 2 randomly crashing, Age of Empires works again, Sea of Thieves is playable on the Steam Deck again, Borderlands Game of the Year Edition is playable again, with, along with many others. I'm not going to list all the fixes here, but there's a link in the article in the show notes to the GitHub page where you can see everything. So if you have a game where you're having issues, you can check out the release notes to see if they fixed what you were seeing. So happy gaming, yeah. everybody. Yeah, so we have a question coming in from Joe Pruitt over on YouTube. Wants to know, is Easy Anti-Cheat still an issue on Linux? Uh, yes. It, it, it depends on which one you're using because they'll fix it and then sometimes anti-cheat will make some changes but there have been anti-cheat companies working with proton to actually make it work better mm -hmm. so there, it's going to be very game specific yeah there are enough steam decks out in the world now that game companies are starting to look at it and go yeah it'd be really nice if our game would actually work on that on that platform and and starting to put some effort into making things work um yeah, so there are still a few where it is a problem, but it's getting better. 
The most important question for Linux gaming right now is do all the Fallout games work? Hmm. As far because, as I know, uh, they do. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know about 76, but I don't <laughs> think nobody cares about 76. That is true. <laughs> There's a hot take for you. That's <laughs> some shade being thrown there. Yeah. I completely agree. <laughs> but I, but right. I have played um, three, New Vegas and four on Linux. Yeah. And actually, I just finished Fallout 6. It, or it, I mean, sorry, Far Cry 6. Fall, Fallout 6? <laughs> Living in the future, man. Um, no, it, it has surprised and delighted me over the past few months. There's been uh, a couple of times now that it's like a, a shiny new game. Hey, it goes on sale. That's not terribly much. Buy it, get it, download it, and then go to run it, and it doesn't run. Well, you go over to Proton DB, and if it's a popular enough game, there's a really good chance that someone will have found a workaround for it. So cool, and then you do the workaround, and it makes it run. And then, like a an update or two later, which for a lot of these happens pretty quick, that workaround is now included in the base game, and so it works now for everybody on Linux. And it's just, it's a normal part of game development now that they look at and the downside of this is they're not looking at does it work on linux but they're looking at does it work on proton which is kind of a mixed bag um we've talked we've talked about that in the past this idea of windows the windows api as the video game layer on linux becoming a thing and whether or not that's good or not um but yeah it's it, well, if nothing else it's cool that they they Pretty much, you know, with few exceptions and some easy anti-cheat exceptions, they pretty much all just work. And and one of the things, too, that people cite for having the Windows, you know, like DirectX as the Linux gaming API is, it's, is mm -hmm. the stability. Mm -hmm. There is complaints that making it run on Linux natively, it, it changes too much versus it just, the API always stays the same on Windows. Yeah. So... We've got a uh, we've got a question from Mirror Aurora, which is, will it run Crisis? Yes, it will. And, uh, well, I was going to say there is a uh, um, there is a way to figure that out. Let's see if I can quickly hit the right buttons here. Yeah, so you can go to Proton DB and uh, just search it. And will it run Crisis? Crisis is a gold level, which means you may have to go in and tweak one or two things, but once you do, it will run perfectly. Crisis 2 is platinum. Crisis 3 is also platinum, which means it just works, runs perfectly out of the box. So, and... Uh, and, and I can tell you from user experience, they work. And what does silver mean? Uh, silver is going to mean that you have minor issues while running. It's playable, but you'll run into issues that you wouldn't see on Windows. Uh, and then you get all the way down to like, uh, I think bronze means there's major issues. And um, so you get an exact same experience as you get on Windows. Yeah, gold means the same experience. Silver means you will see minor issues. Um, and let's see. Like, for example, uh, bronze, maybe the cutscenes don't work or, so, you know, or, or some of the audio doesn't play, but it's it's usually I think it's usually usually finishable if it's bronze um, somewhere in there. Because, you know, every once in a while you have a game where the final cutscene will just fail to ever play because of some, some weird reason. And then the bottom tier is garbage. It just it doesn't work at all. It's, just don't even try Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there.